Great. Um, as Susan mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm a team lead for the digital marketers over at Fine Lab, Thomson Reuters business. Um, just kind of, I know we have some a couple of speakers come up next to go more in depth on Panda and Penguin, so uh, I'm going to speak about all three, but most of my deck is about Hummingbird. But I'm just going to go through the who, what, whens, and why. I'll probably, they'll probably do a lot more how than me, so um, hopefully that fits together. Uh, the, the graphic I have up here is not an error. I mean, I think that's what, something that people feel uh, when they look at their website and look at the traffic after some, some of these updates and, and really get concerned about whether they've been impacted positively or negatively. We have to you know, come to the realization that these things are to fix or help help in user experience. So it um, depends on whichever side you're on. But uh, I think first of all, we'll just start with the basics. <laughs> um, you know, these are associated with Google. I, the only reason I put this slide up here, I think everybody kind of knows, knows that, but I think we forget a lot of times when we're looking at remediation or we're looking at doing analytics that there are other, you know, checking your avenues uh, based around all your other search, you know, search partners or where your traffic is coming from can really open your eyes to see if there's a difference in one, one aspect or another. So that's why I threw that one in there. Um, here I just wanted to point out that, you know, a lot of, a lot of times I get questions about which one impacts uh, what things on your website or what they're looking at. So I just kind of wanted to put together, you know, a slide to show you that, you know, Panda and Penguin are really targeting a lot around web spam. Hummingbird was more of a contextual entity search update. Uh, all of them geared towards a better user experience, but if you kind of look at, I went through the estimate or when they were launched and Hummingbird was more recent. That was in, you know, I, I think I saw a lot of this impact to the sites that I worked on in September. But if you look at the Panda, the first one was in February of 2011, the official one. I know they had other, you know, with the farmer update and maybe people have dealt with this a long time. That was just the first time I think they really called it that. Um, and Penguin, um, they've had, you know, that was more targeting linking and they had, uh, that was the first one that was released about two years ago this week. Um, as far as uh, this, just looking at the bottom of the slide, I wanted to show you guys this up. It, I think a lot of people know about this, but again, if you look at the Moz, they have a great algorithm change history. If, if you are ever wondering if you're looking back at analytics and wondering when something happened on a certain date, uh, that's a really great place to start. Um, I just put the control F in the corner because uh, unless you go into those years, it's the whole list, but that's a really great resource for any of you who have used that. Just kind of going into what is Hummingbird. Um, Hummingbird was the first full rewrite of the Google search engine since 2002. And it was, although a lot of these are geared towards better search results, this is really geared towards a better understanding of what search is or what the search query is by the user. Uh, it's really looking at understanding contextual search. Um, historically, search was, you know, look, a lot of the smaller words were kind of eliminated from queries. If you mixed them, mixed them around a little bit, you not, wouldn't necessarily get different results. Where I think now you see a lot more of that. As you ask different questions, you'll see a lot of different results. Um, also, uh, kind of going to it further, but understanding users and how people are searching mobile um, and with their voice, I think that's part of the issue, part of the reason for this, this big update. Um, and then how structured data plays into how these things are shown and, and how search engines understand what your site's about. So just kind of briefly touching on structured data. Um, we did have a, I know we had a session here on structured data not that long ago. I think it was well, maybe about a year ago. And um, it's, it's really, a lot of people are talking about schema.org and, and those things. And it's really just helping you code your site so that it's, it's better understood by the search crawlers to help determine what it's about. Um, how does this play into ranking factors? I get asked that question all the time. Uh, Technically, you won't get an answer that this is ever playing into ranking factors, but if, if your website is understood by the search crawlers and you know exactly what, you know, what, if you're telling them exactly what you want to tell them, they understand it, they're, you're going to show up for more relevant searches. So do I think it impacts search or ranking factors? Absolutely. Um, I just think it may be in a little different way than people think of, of certain terms. Um, some of the effects that we've seen since then, uh, I've seen a lot more site links, um, especially if they're coded correctly. I, I have some some graphs on that later. I'll show you a little bit about the knowledge graph. Um, that's something Google is very excited about for user experience. Um, and the structured data plays a huge part of that role in Hummingbird does. Um, and then some of this is serving up different content based upon the, the searcher's device and, and where that, how those are showing up or if the knowledge graph shows up and, and where the user's at. 
So just kind of touching up on structured data, I have a couple, of, I just wanted to show a couple of slides here. Here, I looked specifically for the schema.org um, breadcrumbs. That was where that search came from. And as you can see here, they have some site links here, just like a breadcrumb in the search results. Um, you know, it really, it really depends on what you're trying to do. I think you should stick, you know, pick a markup that's good for what you're doing and stick with it. And I think a lot of people are familiar with schema.org. They've used the HCART, RDFA. If you have any questions about that, please do not see me afterwards, because I know nothing about it. So, but I just, I just know that people have used it successfully, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And then Open Graph is more of looking at when you're trying to feed social, um, social channels or, or have, you know, when you're looking at technology pulling in automatic posts or anything like that, this really helps you control what these things are about. So just in case you guys haven't heard, we do have a search summit coming up in, in June. Um, if you haven't registered, just go check it out. But um, I think we've all looked at times when we've had pictures that didn't show up how we wanted to, where they just grabbed text here, and that really can help you with, with that also for your user experience. Uh, here's just another graph. I wanted to show a little bit more about site links. I think a lot of us have seen these and really tell, you know, kind of tells what the site's about um, and if the search engines understand it and how to display it. Uh, here's another example of site links. This is one that I've seen a lot more with structured data, especially in, if you're doing it with navigation. So I think, again, when you're looking at the coding side, I think it really helps determine what these things are all about. Looking at the the knowledge, this is really what the knowledge graph is here, the big picture everybody sees on the side now, that's considered the knowledge graph. Um, a couple of things I want to point out here is also this here, just showing if, if, if the search engine understand what your site's about and they know what you're searching for, this is another opportunity for you to maybe show up on the side there. Um, just a couple more slides I wanted to show you. Uh, this was just one on Penguin since we were talking about that tonight. As you can see how lot different it is. And then the one on the right there is Target. Um, the reason why I used Target was that they, you can see from the different, the three different knowledge graphs that this one here has a map, it has photos, it has reviews. Again, it has what other people may have searched for or competitors. So as you're looking at how to build out your content to your site, this is another opportunity for you to show your place. Some people don't like their competitors there, but again, it's, it's a fair point. If it's a fair playing field, you can get your stuff there too. Another, when, when uh, you look at the articles that come out of the search, Google search engineers, it really are starting to stress around Hummingbird, Hummingbird also as search metrics and understanding your users. Um, not only they're trying to understand what to display to them, but also how that information is being used by the, the searcher. So just understanding user metrics at a high level, I think, you know, a lot of us look at simple things such as bounce rate, and I don't want to dis discount those things because they are important, but I think we have to understand when we're looking at certain certain metrics like that, there is no industry term, so just my suggestion is just to understand what data you're looking at. Um, you can actually, most analytics, if not all platforms today, you can create your own bounce rate, so it depends on what it comes out of, like, out of the box, um, and a lot, of, a lot of them do judge it differently. Uh, but a couple of tips here just I think that some people just maybe don't think about, I guess, well this one maybe is a tip, but internal site search is, is one that, you know, if people are willing to come to your site and sit on your site and then search for something else, which is what we hope we don't have to have them do, that's really, a, a, it can be a good tool um, because of the keywords that we don't get today of what you maybe need to structure your data around. Uh, and then attribution and tracking and understanding your customer. Um, looking at user metrics, understanding your customer and how to improve that, I think is very important. Uh, and the searcher experience, once they once they are delivered your content or go to your site, um, something that I think speed's becoming more and more of a play. Uh, looking at Hummingbird for how the you know how they're looking at serving up content for de per device. Uh, you know, there's just for mobile. You can look at M dot is is one where you, you know some people will. If we want to look at use, doing, a speci doing information or putting information on a specific device, that's nice if you do it right. Sometimes um, I've had issues, I guess, where uh, I've had, like if I look at a Chrome, Chromebook, it serves up the mobile version. Um, if I'm looking at an iPad, sometimes it serves up the mobile version. So then some people switch to responsive design, which is also a great, a great tool. Um, a lot of that is moving things around so they can see it correctly, but um, the, the last thing I have there is dynamic serving. 
Uh, if you want to put in the effort, there's also opportunity for understanding what devices customers are on and then serving up a particular page to serve that user. Uh, that gets a little more tricky and you have to understand your investments, but um, I, I think that's an important part of, of building for the future. And then location. Um, I'll talk about this a little more later, but we've really seen a lot of difference in, in location searches or geo-based searches uh, since the young day. Um, what, is, what is Panda? Um, I'll just kind of go over an overview here. I know these guys are going to talk a little bit more about Panda and Penguin, but uh, Panda was an algorithm, algorithmic update targeting web spam that really was targeted mostly around content. So if you're looking at thin content, on your website, content farms, if it was content that was out, if you're syndicating content, uh, I think we all know the easy went through their issues, article base I think had some, there's a, a lot of those con content distributors. Sites with large scale content. Sites with high ad to content ratios, again it's a user experience thing. Um, understanding that you know, if a user goes to a site with it's mostly ads, uh, part of the, one of the updates that came out with uh, having your ads or having your content show up below the fold, that was part of the user experience issue. I think we just, you know, kind of everything goes back to user experience. And um, then doorway or button pages uh, are another, are another uh, issue that they specifically targeted. I mean, just think about when you're coming to a page, unless it's like a branded page or, or it's, you know, a lot of times some of those home pages don't have a lot of content. But if you have an internal page that you're trying to drive users to for usability, if it's just a bunch of links, it really doesn't do much for you. Um, the update frequency, uh, currently, um, Moz will probably show you, I don't know if they're even doing all of them now, but there's some form of Panda, uh, Google has basically said there's some form of Panda rolling out every month. Um, it's, I, I think they do major ones over time, but they, over, they roll it out over seven to ten days, so um, there's an opportunity there. If you're, if you're having issues, that maybe, you know, you can fix them sooner than later. Um, Penguin was algorithmic. Another algorithmic update targeting link spam and keyword stuffing. Uh, link factors there. Um, anchor text and link quality are two big ones. Um, also, where they are, what they are, how they got there, and how fast. Uh, you know, if somebody hasn't built a link in five years and they get 5,000 links the next day, obviously that's kind of an idea. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's kind of an idea. Um, and it can be affect site wide or category based. So. Uh, Filters versus penalties. Um, this is how I look at it. Filters versus penalties. I have this discussion with customers all the time. Was my site penalized? Was it a filter? Um, there's a small difference in my mind. I don't know if it's if this is the industry, but uh, filters I consider algorithm based. Um, after you repair what you need to repair, it's, it's going to automatically read that, and bring it back. Uh, if you you know his, for Penguin specifically, updates have historically been about every six months. The reason why it's not done that way is because Panda. Um, from what I know is, is really incorporated into the current factors in the Google algorithm where Penguin has some, sometimes there's, it's, it's more of a major engineering effort, so they kind of have to roll that in as, as one big group after they get their ducks in a row. So um, manual penalty is a little different. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that except for that's a, you know, if you see that in Webmaster Tools, if you're affected by an algorithmic penalty, right, that's not necessarily the same thing as this. I'm not saying it couldn't happen at the same time, because maybe it would, but um, that's that's a different, that's a reconsideration request. Um, what's next? Um, deliver the most unique and relevant content as fast as possible. Uh, we talk about all the things that change in search every day, and I don't think this is one of them that has ever changed. Uh, that's what they've always wanted to do, so think about that as you're, as you're building out your content. Um, one thing I just kind of wanted to mention is, you know, at this point is, you know, one of the, one of the updates that we did, you know, when Hummingbird came out was uh, a really big shift in, in, they are targeting contextual search, but it was about geographical um, targeting. We work with attorneys, uh, but if I was doing a search for a Minneapolis personal injury lawyer and did a search for a personal injury, just personal injury lawyer that was located in Minneapolis, we saw, it used to be a lot, a lot similar results if you, if you put yourself there, but it's really not in a lot of cases anymore. I think they kind of see you're looking for a directory. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're talking with your customers or doing your own your own stuff. Is just kind of put yourself. You can use some tools and put yourself in the mobile search space um, without identifiers and stuff like that. Because it's, it's really depends on where you're looking at, what angle you're looking, at, or where you're doing it from, and what you're looking at. So um, that's all I really have for you. If you want to connect with me, those are the three that I use quite a bit. If you just want to search, you'll find me.
But uh, that's all I have to do. I think we're doing questions afterwards. So. Yeah.